Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I want to talk about the problem of managing state in your Blazor application. Currently we have something like this, what you just see in your screen right now. In a very simple app you have your user and then you have a bunch of components and here we have one. And this component usually has a state internally represented by variables or properties. And then we have events like on-click events or uh, type ahead events and stuff like that. And then you can have nested components. And this is easy if you're just seeing a to-do list or the uh, application that comes out of the template in Blazor. It's easy to manage this because it's not much. But as you're going into more complicated things, you'll see that state management becomes a pain because everything can mutate your state in your Blazor application unless you control that. For example, if we go in a more complicated scenario where we have two components, you have your component one where you're using might be interacting, but if the state of this component changes through an event, then this state might actually be used by another component that also is affected by it and it needs to represent a change in that state. But then this component also can change other states and potentially even the state of the original component. So you can have this mess of a state management system where you cannot actually see what's going on and then you might have bugs that are very hard to reproduce and it's going to be a very hard thing to manage as your application becomes bigger. And this is where we can use a very popular library from JavaScript called Redux in our application to manage the state. Uh, just to make it clear, we won't be actually using Redux. And Redux is just a library that implements a few concepts like the Flux architecture and then CQRS and event sourcing. But we're going to use the exact same concepts through a library that a member of the community has created to see how we can manage state in a very efficient and manageable way. And let's see our example, how, how Redux looks like, how this flux or package operates and we're going to see why it's easier and better to manage the state for our application or components so i'm going to explain what you're seeing right now uh, this is a basic implementation of flux or the package we're going to use which is essentially a redux in blazor uh, we have our user as before and now we have our component and the component no longer stores its state in the component it's just that dot razor file with the state coming from somewhere else. And where this state is coming from? It's coming from a, a centralized store. This store is a huge singleton object. And you might be saying, oh, isn't that an anti-pattern, like a huge object in my application? Normally, it would be considered as such. But in this specific scenario, it's actually a great tool that we can use to manage our application state. And you're going to see exactly why. We're exposing the state for this component through a store of the type of the component and you can also use stores of other types in your component if you want to see the state of other things and the state is never mutated on that store instead here's what happens the component during an event will dispatch through a dispatcher an action imagine the action as just like any other uh, thing that happened and you describe this with a C-sharp class that has some properties in it to explain what exactly happened and then this action is being picked up by something called a reducer and the reducer is just like an event handler which only has a reduce method which you can imagine as like a handle method and this reduce method is a pure method this means that whatever is coming in whatever the parameter is will not be mutated, cannot be mutated. And this is very important. Instead, we're getting the action and the current state and we construct the new state based on that action and the previous state. But this previous state is never mutated. Very important in the whole concept. Then this new state is pushed into the store and then served to the component. And this is exactly what Redux does. There's no magic in it. This is a very predictable approach to the whole concept. And that's because you know exactly which reducer can create a new state for that uh, state in the store. And you can track it and you can actually replay it. And you can export it and import it and debug it very, very easily. We're going to see how we can do that in this video. And let's see exactly the same thing as before. If you add another component, what happens to uh, your architecture? internally I mean. So here we have two components, component one, component two. And now all you need to do to add the other component is 
you have another set of an action and a reducer and then the new state into the store and then you have a store of t which is essentially a state provider for that component and you could very much use the same state in another component if you want to provide it but nothing can mutate this state and in fact because c-sharp has getters and setters this state shouldn't have any setters nothing should be able to change it even during runtime instead we're going to have the reducer everything goes through that pure method and then the state is recreated and then pushed into the store and we're going to see exactly how we're going to do that in that video this video is part of my blazor series so if you don't want to miss any episodes please subscribe and hit the sub notification bell to get notification when a new video comes out so here we have our application that we'll be building uh, throughout the lifetime of uh, this uh, playlist this tutorial series and um, we have the counter.razor component, which is just a component where you just click to increment the count. And we have the current count stored as a private field here. And every time we increment count, we increase that count. And this is the state of our component. It's this count property. And this is starting very uh, simple and straightforward, by the way. The reason why I'm showing this is because when we build our Trello clone, I'm going to heavily use this pattern and I'd like you to be able to follow it without feeling lost. So that's why I'm going to start small and then when we actually see it in practice, it's going to make more sense in a large scale application. So the first thing I want to do here to implement my um, Fluxor approach is to add the Blazor.Fluxor package. This is a package created by a community member. And I highly recommend you check it on GitHub. There's like a couple of other projects as well, but I found that Flaxor is probably uh, my favorite. Again, as a personal opinion, you can choose your own, but that's how I'm going to manage state in this application. So I'm going to use Flaxor and um, that should be added. And then the first thing I need to do is I'm going to set up some code for Flaxor. So the first thing I need to do is go to the app.razor at the very top. And I'll need to do a, a couple of things. I need to initialize my stores essentially. So I'm going to say inject blazor.flaxor.i store. And that's the store I showed you in the graph is where the state lives. And then underneath that, I'm going to do store.initialize. And that's all I need to do to initialize my store. And once I've done that, I need to go to the host.cshtml. And down here, I need to uh, include a JS file, which is coming from the package we just added. And that is going to be underscore content for slash blazor dot flexor for slash index dot JS. And that's it in terms of setup. Now we're going to convert this counter dot razor to a Flaxor component. And the reason why we're going to do that is because one of the huge advantages of using Flaxor is that everything that is a Flaxor component will actually instantly be notified of changes when the state is updated. And we're going to see how that plays out in a more elaborate example when I'm going to involve the navigation in a moment. But for now, let's just stick to that. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to go here. I'm going to say inherits from Flaxor component. So this is a Flaxor component. And then I need to create a few things for this component. So I'm going to go in my uh, root folder and I'm going to say store. And I'm going to make a folder in here for its state that I'm managing. Uh, the first thing I want to do then is I'm going to make the counter folder because we're going to put everything we need for the counter.razor folder in here. And I'm going to create my first file, which is going to be the counter state. And the counter state just needs to have the current count. It's very important to remove the setter here because we don't want this state to be changed by anything in our code once created. And then we're going to just initialize it from the constructor. So current count and then current count equals current count. And that's it in terms of state, starting very simple. That's all we need. Now, the next thing we need in here is a feature. And the feature is just a way to identify our state in our store. So I'm going to create our counter feature class. And this counter feature will be a feature of type counter state. 
And if I implement the missing members, you'll see I'm getting a get name and a get in initial state. So I'm going to shorthand write them. Uh, this is going to be the counter component. So I'm going to name it just counter. And then the initial state is where we provide what the uh, component will be initialized with. So I'm going to say current count will be zero. So we start with nothing. And we can close that as well. Now the next thing I need is an action. And this action will be what will happen whenever somebody clicks the button. So I'm going to say counter dot create class. And I'm going to create an increment counter action. And this is the action we're going to dispatch every time somebody clicks the button. And I don't think I'm going to add any parameters here. This is just used for identification purposes. But if you wanted, for example, your clicks to count as two, you can have the click count here, not counter, sorry, count. And this count will be used by the, the reducer when the new state is created. And a nice segue this one because we are going to need a reducer as well. These four things are crucial for our whole uh, Flagshore implementation. So I'm going to create a, a reducer called increment counter reducer. And this reducer will need to inherit from redu the reducer. And then we have two generic types. The first one is the counter state. So the state we're going to uh, use and then the action we're going to use to listen to. So increment counter action. And there's only one missing member to implement and that is the reducer. And as you see here, the reducer, this pure method, we have the uh, current state of our component and then the action where we can actually just say action dot anything and get any values related to the action. The uh, thing I want to do here is I'm going to say return new counter state. And as you can see, we don't change anything here. We don't do anything like state dot current count plus plus. And in fact, we cannot do that anyway, because this is immutable. We are returning a new state. And this is very, very important. And we're going to say state dot current count, which is the previous one, and then plus one. <clears throat> and that's how we're going to increment. And like I said, if I had a different like step level, I could just say action dot step and increase based on a different uh, number. But now I'm just going to do one so you can actually understand this with the minimal amount of code required. So once I have these three things in place, I can go back to my component, sorry, four things. And I no longer need to use this current count. This can go away. I no longer mutate anything in my component. Instead, I'm going to inject two things. First, I'm going to inject an I dispatcher. And this dispatcher is what is being used to dispatch our actions. The other thing I need to inject is an I state of type and then the state type. So in this scenario, it's counter state. So if I just copy that, our counter state is now being injected. And that's where I'm going to get the current count from. I can do counter state dot value dot and the current count I created in that class can be accessed here, but nothing can change it here. What I'm going to do when I now click increment count is the following. I'm going to say dispatcher dot dispatch. There's only one method in here and it accepts an object and this object will be an action and it's going to be the new increment counter action and then this action will automatically be listened to and increment our value in order to do that i need to go to the startup and i need to use some a di initialization code i'm going to say services dot add fluxor and then some options here as well i'm going to say options dot use dependency injection type of startup dot assembly for a little bit of assembly scanning and this will automatically register everything you're going to find all the uh, actions all the reducers everything for you you don't even have to do any other work to get this to work now with all that out of the way let me just run the application and see how our application is working now so as you can see our application is running and if i go to the counter component 
click me now still increments the count in the same way it used to but look at this if i go to another component completely the other one goes away is being disposed and then i go back you can see that my state is the same it didn't change even though if i did this without this uh, flaxor approach this would be zero now if this will be only disposed completely if i refresh my state is no longer there you can see that even that changed but now i can just maintain the state and as the user is navigating the site everything that they changed in different places they stay the same because the state is being managed by this single entity now this is very cool but let me show you what's cooler in this scenario if i stop the application now i'm gonna go to the shared folder and find the nav menu and i'll go i'm going up here and i'm gonna say inject the i state of the counter state and as you can see the counter state is here injected everything but now i can go to the counter and if i say open brackets counter state dot value dot current count and if i of course change this into a flexor component so if i say inherits from a flexor component then when i run this let's see what happens now I have my application running and the counter is zero because the state of that thing is zero. Even though the component is not initialized, the state is there and I can access it. But the cool thing is not that I can access it, is that without any code, once I click this, this also changes. I didn't need to subscribe to it. It automatically subscribed as long as it is a Fluxor component, which is awesome because not only you can actually see it changing two components at the same time with minimal code, but you can also change components and the state is still maintained and shown. And the cool thing is you have full control over the action and the reducer, which means that the state can be predictably and deterministically updated, which is huge when it comes to debugging our application. And you might be saying, oh, that's very cool. That can't possibly get any cooler. Well, let me show you how it can actually. If I go to the startup, this package also includes some other options that are very interesting, like if I add middleware and middleware is a concept of Redux and this flux architecture, and we can take a look at it in a future video alongside uh, custom subscriptions. Uh, but for now, let's just focus on this. If I do Redux dev tools middleware and also options dot add middleware root routing middleware bo both coming from Flaxor. if i now run the application let's see what i can access so i'm here back to my counter component and as you can see this icon here in the redux dev tools which is a google chrome plugin that you can download if i click inspect there's another thing here called redux and ignore the errors here we're going to ignore them for now as you can see i have this little inspector of my application and as i'm mutating the state look at this you can see exactly when and how the state was mutated you can see the raw json that's being that's being pushed you can see the tree the diff you can see the state change on exactly the url that happened and you can even do things like export and import this the other thing that you can do which is very cool but sadly i'm doing this in a, a server side blazer is that you could actually replay the whole thing and as you can see it's being replayed but it's not actually changing anything that's because it doesn't work on server side blazer but if you were using client side blazer you would see the actions happening automatically before your eyes and the reason why this is amazing is because you can debug this very very easily and efficiently and this is a free plugin you can just download and install it i highly recommend it i'm going to be using it in our uh, trello uh, project so if you like this, uh, please make sure you go and start the project on GitHub. It's not my project. I don't even know the person who made it, uh, but it's a great project. That's all I had for you for today. Just an introduction in this Fluxor Redux type of thing. I'm going to make more videos on the subject as we're going on. And if you like this type of content, please let me know in the comments down below. Special thanks to my GitHub sponsors for making these videos possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well to get notifications for new videos. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.